In this video we are looking at special triangles and quadrilaterals. Let's start with the equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles are regular. That means that they have three sides or edges of equal length and three angles of equal size. Since the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees, each angle is 60 degrees because 3 lots of 60 is 180 degrees. There are a couple of other things we can say about equilateral triangles. From lesson G1C you should know about reflection symmetry and it turns out that the equilateral triangle has three lines of reflective symmetry. From lesson G1D you should know about rotational symmetry as well and the equilateral triangle has an order of rotational symmetry of 3. That means you could rotate this triangle around and it would fit on itself exactly three times during one full turn. So the equilateral triangle is the first of the special triangles we are looking at. Next we've got isosceles and scalene triangles. Isosceles triangles have exactly two sides or edges of equal length. That's what's indicated by these dashes. Also they have exactly two equal angles out of the three angles altogether. Remember, these angle markers show that those two angles are the same in this particular triangle. It turns out that isosceles triangles have exactly one line of symmetry. Isosceles triangles also have no rotational symmetry. That means the order of rotational symmetry is 1. The triangle only fits on itself once in the full turn and that's just its starting position. Next we have scalene triangles. Scalene triangles have three sides of different length. They also have three different angles and they have no lines of symmetry and no rotational symmetry. These triangles down here are examples of scalene triangles. These dashes, because they're all different, we've got a single dash, a double dash and a triple dash, show that the sides are of different lengths. So we've now seen ways of classifying triangles by the lengths of edges. With equilateral triangles we have three equal edges. With isosceles triangles we have two equal edges. And if we've got no equal edges, we've got scalene triangles. Next, we've got a very important type of triangle, but it actually overlaps categories that we have already come across. We're talking about right angled triangles. A right angled triangle must have a right angle in it. Because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and a right angle is 90 degrees, the other two angles must also add up to 90 degrees. That means both of the other angles are acute. A right angle triangle could be isosceles as well. Here is an example of a right angled isosceles triangle. We've got a right angle down here, that's the 90 degree angle, and then we have two edges of the same length. And that then also means that these two angles are equal and in this case they would have to be 45 degrees to make all three angles add up to 180. Right angle triangles can also be scalene. In this example we have a right angle here but the three sides are all of different length and that also means we've got three angles that are all different. The 90 degree angle is the biggest one We've then got two smaller angles. Remember, they're both acute. In this case, they're both different because this is scalene, not isosceles. 
Now we're looking at quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are shapes with four straight sides. The first quadrilateral we're going to look at is the parallelogram. Take a look at the diagram. We've got a lot of information on here. We have got a pair of parallel edges here and here. Those are marked by the single arrow. And then we've got another pair of parallel edges here and here. Those are marked by the double arrow. This is the defining feature of a parallelogram. Two pairs of parallel edges or two pairs of parallel sides. So if someone tells you that you've got a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel edges, that is enough information to tell you you've got a parallelogram. A parallelogram also has other properties that follow from this. We can see from the diagram that the opposite edges are of equal length. We've got the double dashes here and here, so those two are the same length as well as being parallel. And we've got the single dashes here and here, which means these two edges are the same length as well as being parallel. Finally, we can also see that the opposite angles are the same size. If you're not sure about what these symbols all mean, you need to go back to the video for lesson G1A. To sum up the parallelogram then, we have two pairs of opposite, parallel and equal sides, and we have two pairs of opposite, equal angles. We're now going to look at some special types of parallelogram. You'll notice that we're now looking at the rhombus, the rectangle and the square, and these are all included within this big set in red, which was the set of parallelograms. That's because these are all parallelograms themselves. Let's take a look at the rectangle first of all. The rectangle meets all of the criteria to be a parallelogram. It's got opposite sides that are parallel and therefore it's automatically a parallelogram. All the other properties follow as well. The opposite sides are the same length and the opposite angles are equal. However, this is a bit more special than any old parallelogram because it happens to have four equal angles. It's not just the case that the opposite angles are equal, but actually that all four angles are equal. And in this case, they are 90 degrees. A rectangle then has all the properties of the parallelogram, but also has four equal 90 degree angles. Next, let's take a look at the rhombus. A rhombus also is a special type of parallelogram. It has all the properties of the parallelogram, but this time it has to have four equal edges. In other words, all four sides are the same length. The angles could be different, however, just like in the parallelogram. We only need the opposite pairs of angles to be equal, but all four don't have to be the same like they did in the rectangle. So this shape here is an example of a rhombus. The next shape we're going to look at is the square. This could be considered the most special of the quadrilaterals. It is the regular quadrilateral. That means all four edges are the same length and all four angles are the same size. So this makes it both a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time, as well as being a parallelogram. We've got opposite sides being parallel. We've got opposite angles being the same, but like the rectangle, they're not just the opposite ones that are the same. All four angles are the same. And like the rhombus, all four edges are the same length. Here are some quick facts about symmetry to do with these quadrilaterals. The square has four lines of symmetry. This square has got one horizontally, one vertically, and it's got the two diagonals as well. So it has four lines of symmetry and it also has 
rotational symmetry of order 4. That means you could rotate this square and it would fit on itself exactly four times in a full turn. Now, if we look at rectangles in general, so rectangles which are not squares, they only have two lines of symmetry. We have one going across and one going up and down in this case, but the diagonals are not lines of symmetry. So two lines of symmetry, and it also only has rotational symmetry of order two. Remember to check out lessons G1C and G1D for more information on this. In the same way, the rhombus only has two lines of symmetry and rotational symmetry of order two when we're dealing with this kind of rhombus, a rhombus that isn't also a square. Meanwhile, parallelograms that belong out here, so parallelograms that aren't special enough to be a rhombus or a rectangle, and, and therefore not a square, they have no lines of symmetry at all, and they have rotational symmetry of order two. Next, we have the kite. The kite has some properties that make it very similar to a rectangle. With a rectangle, we had two pairs of edges that were of equal length. So we had two long sides, and two short sides. The same thing is true for a kite. We've got two long sides that are the same length and two short sides that are the same length. However, there's a key difference between the kite and the rectangle. In the rectangle, we had opposite sides of equal length. The same was true, by the way, for the parallelogram. We've got two pairs of equal sides or equal edges, and it is the opposite ones that are the same length. With the kite, that's not true. We actually have two pairs of adjacent sides of equal length. So these two sides are adjacent, they are next to each other and they're the same length. And then we have another pair, these two edges that are the same length, which are adjacent. Technically, a rhombus is a special type of kite. We have two adjacent edges here that are the same length and another two here that are the same length. It just so happens that all four are the same length. So since the rhombus is a special type of kite, the square is also a special type of kite. There's one more property of the kite that we need to spot and that is we have a pair of equal angles here and they are opposite each other. This means that the general kite has one line of symmetry, unless it is special like a rhombus or even a square. Kites out here that are not a rhombus or a square have exactly one line of symmetry down the middle like that. They also have no rotational symmetry either. Again, unless they are a rhombus or a square, in which case they do. Next, we have the trapezium. A trapezium is a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel edges. Now, think about what this means, at least one pair. So it could have two pairs of parallel edges. And you'll see that the Venn diagram shows that trapeziums, or trapezia, include all of these parallelograms. So parallelograms which, remember, include the rhombus square and rectangle. Now, if you ever have a shape with two pairs of parallel edges, it is technically a trapezium, but it would be more informative to describe it as one of these. So if you ever had a shape with two pairs of parallel edges, you probably wouldn't call it a trapezium, even though it technically still is a trapezium. It would be like calling a square a parallelogram. Now, technically, a square is a type of parallelogram, but if you've got a square, it would be more detailed to say that it's a square because then you have more information. You could be sure that it's got 90 degree angles, for example, and you could be sure that all four sides would be the same length, which isn't always true for all parallelograms. So just be aware, this is the definition of a trapezium, but 
in practice, what we normally do is talk about shapes that have exactly one pair of parallel edges. Now, shapes that have exactly one pair of parallel edges can't be parallelograms, so therefore they can't be rhombuses, squares or rectangles. And these are the trapeziums we tend to be interested in. By the way, the plural of trapezium is trapeziums or trapezia. Both are acceptable. We've now had a look at all of the special quadrilaterals, but there are other quadrilaterals that are not so special, and they would belong out here in the Venn diagram. These quadrilaterals would have no pairs of parallel sides, and they would also not be kites. Remember, if we've got any quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, we would call it a trapezium. If it had two pairs of parallel sides, it would be one of these shapes in here. And it would also still be a trapezium, but it would be better to call it one of these, as we've just discussed. But a shape with no parallel sides would belong in this grey area. Now, some of those can still be special. We have some kites which don't have parallel sides, but they do have the two pairs of sides of equal length that are adjacent to each other. But we can have quadrilaterals which don't even have that property that belong out here. For example, a quadrilateral whose sides are all of different lengths, something like this. This particular quadrilateral has no pairs of parallel sides. None of the sides are of equal length. So it is still a quadrilateral, it's got four sides, but it's not one of these special ones. It doesn't have a special name. 